Hello and welcome to tomorrow's headlines today. I am your host, Robin Cunningham, like it says right there. Oh, it says Robin and Brandy, so I guess I'm the both of us right now. Uh, but <laughs> isn't that kind of funny? Uh, I'm your host, Robin Cunningham, with Fireside Grace Ministries, and I am so happy to have you here. Uh, now it just says my name. I fixed it. Uh, I'm so happy to have all y'all here for this. And I just want to start out by saying, if you're wondering why I'm wearing the same shirt as I was in the video that I posted previously, it's because this is a pre-recorded video. So uh, there you have it. Now, the way I see it is the prophetic words aren't going to change. The relevancy of the word is not going to change just because I pre-record the video. And the reason I say that is because I have seen Julie Green's videos uh, uh, several times. Um, I don't watch them you know, very often or frequently, really. And I'm, I'm sure she doesn't watch us frequently either. Like, Usually prophetic people don't... Um, don't get involved with other people's um, prophecies and stuff. Not that we don't know each other or talk or anything like that, but um, we're not like prophecy seekers. And are usually, for most prophetic people, we try to keep our words pure by not listening to other people's words, and that will prevent us from becoming parrots. That prevents us from wanting to seem accurate when... Uh, we're not, and and all kinds of things. And what happens is we'll have very similar words that will collaborate and uh, reflect one another, because it says that God will do nothing unless he tells his prophets, his servants, the prophets first. And that is what it is. So we are going to jump into this. We, are, we have things to talk about regarding a flash crash, uh, some Binance stuff, um, Shiba Inu and a bunch of other, a Carrie Lake of all of everybody. Like I haven't really prophesied about her very much, and uh, some other things. Okay, so I love you guys. Be blessed, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. <music> So I really love that intro. I've been thinking about making a new one uh, because, you know, I just kind of get bored with the intros and I just want to make a new one. Uh, but one day I'll have an intro that I'm just like, oh, I love it so much. I've got to go with it. Uh, so I I don't know. I kind of like the Fire Lion one. Maybe I'll get back to that sometime. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But, you know, whatever. So we'll check it out and I'll, I'll look into it. But just know this. I'm not wanting to change it just because some people said, I don't like that intro, or I don't like the 80s music, or the music is terrible. There's always people who get butthurt about something um, in ministry. Part of my French, part of my uh, military lingo here. Um, but, uh, you know, that's not what makes me want to do things. I do things as I feel led by the Spirit, or just because I want to sometimes. So there's that. All right, so... Uh, we are officially a 501c3. If you are the type of person who is willing to go back and amend your 2022 tax returns, um, and you would like a receipt for your uh, charitable contributions that you've sewn into this ministry, we will be more than willing to send you that receipt if that's what you want. But you have to email us. Uh, at firesidegrace at yahoo.com so that we can do that for you. All right. Um, also, we uh, are going to be changing things on our uh, website. Things will be on a per donation basis, like any other 501c3. And uh, that about uh, sums that up. Make sure you check out Brandy's uh, dog training site, experttraining.org. That's expert training.org, O-R-G. Uh, go to her Shalom Sanctuary 
area and look at the dogs that we have for adoption. Several of the dogs are not listed on the website. So if you want to see those other dogs and there's a specific dog or breed that you're interested in adopting, adopting, please let us know. And the, the benefit of adopting from us is a number one, you help us save dogs and accomplish part of what God's calling is on Brandy's life. But you get this dog that is fully trained in basic obedience. Uh, so it will know, come, sit, down place and it will obey your commands the first time that you tell them uh what you want them to do we don't teach shake because that encourages people to or dogs to become handsy and pawsy and uh that we we just don't encourage that but if that's something you want feel free to do that with your dog um so do you get that also they're all vetted uh groomed professionally groomed taken care of up to date on all of their shots uh chipped and everything, you know, they will be spayed or neutered. So if you're trying to breed them, it won't happen. You might want to look elsewhere. But we, Brandy trains service dogs. And we all, if you're a veteran and you need a service dog, she, we typically train service dogs for veterans for free. All right. Unless you want to sew into the ministry and, and help that because it is a month-long process that Brandy takes to train that dog and make sure that it's rock solid uh, to get all the paperwork to meet all the federal requirements and to give you a proper licensing certification for a service dog. Anybody can go and print off a certificate saying that their dog is a service dog, but you can get yourself in a lot of trouble doing that. Not that it's necessarily illegal, but when you have a dog that's lunging at another dog uh, or chasing after children or is uh, prey-driven or something like that, chases after squirrels, then it's not going to be very helpful or functional for you as a service dog, and it gives service dogs a bad name and could put severe restrictions on them, such as what people have done with emotional support animals and made it so that emotional support animals typically don't get public access anymore uh, like they used to. They used to be able to be treated like service animals, but people abused that. So these are all things that um, Brandy works on. She's also a professional dog trainer. So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or you're willing to come to the area, she will uh, be more than happy to train your dog. She does three-week boarding trains where we take feed the dog, house the dog, take it out, pee, poop. She even, uh, before she gives them back, grooms them, uh, cleans them, does their nails, and, and makes sure that they're all taken care of and, and looking real nice and sharp and also has all of their commands off-leash and on-leash unless they are aggressive. But they'll have all of their... Um, commands off leash as well as on leash so that you can trust them if you're going out in public that you can have them walk beside you with or without a leash and maintain a perfect heel or down when you need them to down or come when you need them to come. So that's the level of expertise that uh, she has and puts into dog training. Okay. Um, that's experttraining.org. Also, if you want to partner with us, you can do so at firesidegrace.com backslash partner with us, or you can find us on PayPal as at Fireside Grace, or you can send checks or money orders to 2145 North Josie Lane, Suite 116-501, Carrollton, Texas, 75006. Or down in the description will be all of our info for like crypto coins and stuff like that. Um, and if there's just another way that you want to uh, uh, support, just let us know. Uh, we have we have ways. You know the Venmos there, all all the stuff. Okay, all right. That being said, um, we really do actually like we're at the the wire here. You know, rents due in five days, and donations are down by fifty percent. That's all. I don't like to say that because it sounds like I'm begging, but we need your prayers. Uh, God will show up. We know that God will show up. He always, always, always does. And the good news is now it's a tax deduction for y'all. So um, we will be getting those receipts for you for your deductions. Uh, all right, so let's jump into the tomorrow's headlines today. Nine minutes and 15 seconds in here. Kept y'all on the hook talking about dogs for about five minutes. All right, the first thing I saw was a crypto crash. I saw a drop coming in cryptocurrency, and it was a pretty significant drop where I saw Bitcoin had gone down under 24 something. Uh, what I see is like 23,000 something or other, and that's a significant drop um, from where it is. But I had a sense, the Lord said that in this time, it will be short-lived. It's not going to last a really long time. Um, but the Lord said that's the perfect time to invest because things are going to turn around rapidly. 
Now, I don't think rapidly means within the next day or within the next week or maybe even within the next month, but rapidly, as in sometime this year or something like that. But I do, I have seen the Lord say that this year Bitcoin would have substantial growth um, that you would see a, a doubling from its its low, its previous low to where it was. I don't know even what that means, but whatever. Um, I also saw that there was a flash crash where something dropped in value by eight thousand uh, dollars of value. So I don't know what's out there that has that much value or uh, whatever. But it was on one specific platform. I don't know exactly which one. Um, but then the Lord started to speak to me about Binance and Kraken, so I want to uh, get into that. Um, but seek him on where that flash crash is going to be, because he said that it will be popping up here very soon. Um, very, very soon. I want to say, I mean, last time he gave me a word like this, it was like the next day that it happened, and people were trying to jump in and cash in on that. So that's something that you'll probably have to keep your eyes open for. But the Lord wants to bless those who are willing to humble themselves and listen and have good hearts and pure motives and intentions um, because he'll drop that short and allow you to get in at basically pennies on the dollar and make a very large profit at that moment, okay? Um, then as I was praying, the Lord was speaking to me about Binance and Kraken. Um, he said that we are going to see news arising um, regarding the expansion of Kraken, and we were also around the, about the same time going to see um, charges, new charges against the leadership of Binance. Uh, and I felt like it, I don't know who the leadership of it, it is, but I, I felt like I heard the word Chow. Maybe it's a name, I don't know, but I heard Chow, but it was spelled C H A. O, not C H O W or C H O A or something like that. I don't know. Um, but that's what I heard was chow, but it wasn't spelled like we spell chow like C H O W. Okay. All right. Next, the Lord said that the SEC is going to begin to target Shiba Inu very, very soon. Um, what the Lord's telling me right now is that behind the scenes, they already have a plan and process, they're already watching them and observing them, and they're formulating a case to attack Shiba Inu. Um, attack some discrepancies and some policies and stuff like that. And basically what it is going to be is a blackmail procedure so that they can get their protection money from Shiba Inu um, because they see the value in Shiba Inu here in its early stage in the game, knowing that it is going to be valuable in the very near future. Um, and, and it will be very similar to what they did to Elon Musk when he was forming Tesla, where they kind of forced him to make a payment or said, we'll shut this down completely. Um, and so he had to end up making a, a payment to the SEC in order to save his company. And uh, he's, he's pretty bitter about that, by the way. So um, that's something that you need to pray about, especially if you're invested in Shiba Inu. But Shiba Inu is going to have good growth. And here's the thing about that. While I was praying, I felt like the Lord was saying that they were going to pay them, that they would actually make a deal. Um, and, and that what that would lead to is very large investors that actually invest billions of dollars into Shiba Inu, not just um, maybe a million here or a few hundred thousand or a few thousand here and there, but literally someone would come along and say, you know, this is something that I want to put $1 billion into. Um, same thing with Doge, that someone would come along and invest a huge amount, like a billion dollars or more, into Doge, and it would just drive the price of Doge to go up exponentially. And I don't know if that was all at once or if it was through multiple transactions, uh, but you, you would see that um, because it's an open and public forum where you can open and publicly see what's being traded, that you would be able to see this person start to pump lots of money into it, and then people would just jump on board and start dumping money into it as well. Um, and it wasn't done in a way that was going to manipulate the price, but it's going to be done in a way that is genuinely, I see prospect in this, and so I'm going to purchase this, but I'm not going to tell anyone so that it doesn't influence them to purchase it, but other people can tell people that this is what I'm doing, all right? Now, this is something that the Lord was speaking to me while I was praying. This is interesting. This isn't your typical type of prophetic word that I get here. Um, this it, it reads as follows. This is what I was hearing from the Lord. Some of us are afraid that if we discover who we are or accept who we are and begin to walk in that, that we feel like we will be rejected. Fear of the unknown, 
fear of rejection and fear of failure um, prevent us from doing what God has called us to do. We become afraid to be who God made us to be because we don't feel like it's okay to accept that role, that title, or that responsibility. And there's a false perception that if we claim that we are prophets or healers or wise, that suddenly we are prideful, we are arrogant, and we respond in such a way as to need to be a um, and, and we are not humble, we are not right. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are being arrogant and you respond in such a way as to need to be addressed by your title as apostle so-and-so or prophet so-and-so or evangelist so-and-so or so forth, then you are probably in a bad place right now and as far as where your pride and ego needs to be, right? Uh, however, it is not wrong. The Lord wants you to know it is not wrong to accept what your calling is and operate in it. Because if someone gives you a prophetic word and says that you are called to be a prophet, and you say, well, I don't know about that, I don't really feel that, or um, I'm not sure about that, I'll have to pray about that, and, and other people tell you, you're called to be a prophet, you're called to be a prophet, and you keep saying, no, 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 I'm not a prophet, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a prophet, you're denying your call, you're denying what God has called you to be. You need to receive that gift. If I put $10,000 on a table and said, this money is yours, if you take it, you will have all of the benefits that come with having $10,000. But you never pick up that $10,000 and you never take it, then you do not receive the benefit of even $1 of that which was yours in the first place because you didn't receive it. You don't have to walk around and be called the great grand master prophet, uh, interdimensional prophet of this, that, and the other thing. But it's okay to say, okay, Lord, you've called me to be a prophet. I don't know how to do it, but I receive it. I will do this. And as you learn and grow, he will call you into that office. When you're ready to be promoted, he will tell you when you're promoted. He will tell you exactly where you are. Like people call me a general. They're like, you're a general of the faith. I'm like, well, that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said, I am a commander, actually, <laughs> which is not that high nor that low. It is an officer. I have an office. The Lord has called me to an office. He has called me to the field. Um, and several things that that he's called me to do, or what I'm supposed to do, but it was about 30-some-odd years before he did that because I had to mature. So there's a difference between operating in the capacity of a prophet or operating in the spirit of the prophet versus operating in the office of the prophet. Okay. Now, like I said, it's not wrong to accept your calling and operate in it. But to never step out and do what God has called you to do, that is the plan of the enemy. The enemy will use your fear of failure, your fear of rejection to convince you that you don't deserve to do this, that there are others more qualified than you, that there's better things for you to do, etc. Satan will feed you that lie as long as you will partake of it. And like a dog to its own vomit, you will return to that sin until you accept and receive what God has called you to. You must accept the responsibility of the calling that God has called you to. So I'm telling you right now, for whoever this word was for, now is your time to receive the mantle that the Lord has given you. It may not be what you want. It may not be what you think you're called to do or what you want to do. But if the Lord has called you, then you must walk in it. Okay, here's the next word. It's not the usual prophetic word like I typically get, like I said before, but it states, I saw, I saw this as clear as day. And when I came out of this vision, I was looking around everywhere to see where I saw this because I knew for a fact that I was seeing this with my physical eyes, but it turned out it was actually a spiritual, but it was so clear and vivid and real that I thought that I was literally seeing this, okay? The eagle has been acting as a vulture for too long. 
feeding off of the dead carcasses that litter its land. But the eagle shall once again fly high as the body of Christ rises up in unity, alive and full of life, and wearing the robes uh, of righteousness. And it will rob the culture of death that the vulture has feasted upon across the land. The eagle will shake off the dust and dirt of death and decay that has encrusted its body and prevented it from soaring high. The Lord has heard the cries and seen the tears of his people who have cried under the bondage of their oppressor for so long. As Israel's cries were heard, so have America's cries been heard and answered. A deliverer has risen, a Deborah that will lead the people but not usurp power from her leader. She will be called a Jezebel by those who are Ahabs that don't like accountability. She will be demonized by the media, and in fact is, and called vermin by soothsaying, soothsaying media knights. She will drive her sword through the, their necks and cut off their heads from their bodies. They will eat their words the same way they tried to devour the country. The cup of wrath that they have poured for themselves will indeed be imbibed. Carrie Lake will not only be a Deborah, brave and bold as a leader of the people, as a judge, when the people cried out for a judge, for righteous judges, the Lord raised up judges, as in the book of Judges, judges, but not only the type of judges that we thought we were asking for, not just righteous Supreme Court justices, not just righteous lower court, federal court justices, or righteous county clerks, or whatever. He has raised up Deborah's. He has raised up David's. He has raised up Samson's. He has raised up Gideon's to do what he has been asked to do, to deliver the nation he's been asked to deliver. Because the church stopped crying out for the leadership of man, but has cried out for the leadership of God. And because of this, God is going to move and restore things in this nation. Because part of the reason why the 2020 return of the king was delayed was because people were praying for restoration of the trumpet. And we were crying out like Israel cried out for a king rather than for God. We were crying out for the trumpet to be restored rather than for God's justice to be restored. And we had to shift that and say, well, God, you do what you're going to do. You raise up righteous judges. You deliver this nation. And we didn't put a restraint on how he can do it. That doesn't mean that he's not going to do it the way that it's been prophesied. It simply means that now the delay is coming to an end. The Lord said they will eat their words the same way they tried to devour the country and the cup of wrath that they poured for themselves will indeed be imbibed. Now listen, this is the part where I left off. Carrie Lake will not only be a Deborah, brave and bold as a leader to the people, but she will be like Yael, that drives the stake through the head of Barack O'Biden. That's what he said to me, Barack O'Biden. <laughs> okay, next. So what I saw with that, basically I shared with you with that, was I saw uh, a vulture sitting on a branch. And then I saw that vulture was scavenging carcasses, that it was feasting off of the death. And that vulture was supposed to be a prophetic movement. And the, the people who were still alive on the ground seeing these this vulture feed on death and become nourished from death rather than on God started to cry out for righteousness, for justice, to God, for God to raise up a leader. And all of a sudden, that vulture started to shake its feathers, and the dust and dirt came off, and it wasn't even a vulture. It was an eagle. And the eagle looked like a vulture because it was covered in dirt, sin, and nastiness. But the Lord has brought restoration, and the eagle took off into the sky and flew. And when that eagle took off and flew the death in the land was converted. I saw him raising up judges like Carrie Lake, like Amy Coney Barrett, who's going to be in the news very much in the near future. 
and he started to bring justice where people had given up on justice. He started to bring voting change and reform where people had given up on that. And we're going to see these things happen. And in the long run, we see a big victory where the trumpet begins to sound its horn and we go back into, but there is one more test because even though there will be a restoration of the trumpet, there will also be a coronation. Oh, maybe you can say inauguration. But there will also be a coronation of God's David. But it will come down between Trump and DeSantis, and that is a test for America. Because though DeSantis would be a good leader for America, this is not his time to reign. But if the people should so choose and did not pass the test, he would come in before his time, and then things that he would accomplish in 2028 would not be accomplished in 2024. And so he would fall short of being able to do all of the things that he was called to do. You also need to keep Carrie Lake in your, um, in your mind and in your prayers uh, because she might become the most uh, powerful woman in history that is legitimately elected, becoming the number two, the vice president. So that's something that you need to pray about. All right, the Lord said, in awe, the nation. Okay, and then the last thing that I saw was the Lord said that there was going to be a discovery of homemade bombs that are discovered around Washington, D.C., that they would be blamed on right-wing conservatives. However, video surveillance will show that it was not right-wing conservatives, but it was, in fact, tied to the government and several uh, not right-wing and liberal groups. Okay, so... What I shared is sensitive in nature, but it's also on Rumble. So if you're watching this and I just disappear, rumble.com backslash Fireside Grace. You can find us there. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Um, go support us. Go right now to our firesidegrace.com website and go to the partnership page and partner with us um, in whatever way you see fit. And until next time, I love you guys. Be blessed, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.